In this video we're going to look at how we calculate the three different averages but this time for grouped data. So just as a reminder the three different types of average are the mean or the arithmetic calculated average, the mode or the most frequently occurring value and the median which is the central value when all of the pieces of data are lined up. Now when we look at grouped data rather than finding the mode what we actually find is the modal group and we'll talk about this more later on and instead of finding the median what we actually find is the median group so if we begin with the scenario and some data in this scenario people have been asked how many DVDs they have in their personal collection okay so number of DVDs And we're going to have some categories. The first category is going to be for people with 0 to 10 DVDs. The second category is going to be for people with between 11 and 20 DVDs. Then we're going to have people with 21 to 30 DVDs. Now there's nothing that says that these groups have to be the same size. So my next group is going to be for people with DVD collections between 31 and 50 DVDs. And then I'm going to have two more groups. One is going to be for people with 51 to 100 DVDs. And the last group is for people with 101 to 250 DVDs. Next, we need our frequencies, which is the number of people who have DVD collection sizes in each of these groups. So 0 to 10, of the people spoken to, 6 people had 0 to 10. 9 people had 11 to 20, 12 people had 21 to 30, 9 people had 31 to 50, 23 people had 51 to 100, and 19 people had between 101 and 250. So in total, if we add all of those frequencies together, that will determine how many people took part in our survey. And adding these up, 6 plus 9 plus 12 plus 9 plus 23 plus 19 gives us a total of 78 people who took part in our survey. Before we can determine the arithmetic mean or the mean average number of DVDs in a person's collection, we need to make some assumptions. And we need to make some assumptions around how many DVDs each of these six people had and how many DVDs each of these nine people had and how many DVDs each of these 12 people had, and so on. So for the six people in the first group, we know that they own somewhere between 0 and 10 DVDs, but we don't know exactly how many they own. And the same is true for our second group. We know that these nine people own somewhere between 11 and 20 DVDs, but we don't know exactly how many. Now the assumption that we make is that each of those people owns the middle or the midpoint of the group in terms of their DVD collection. So someone in the 0 to 10 group, the midpoint between 0 and 10 can be found by adding 0 and 10 together and then dividing it by 2. So the midpoint, I'll just put mid for now, 0 plus 10 is 10, divided by 2 is 5. So we're assuming that all of those 6 people had 5 DVDs. We don't know for certain if that's true, but we're making an approximation and we're making an assumption. And that's the most logical assumption to make. Next, we have our nine people with 11 to 20 DVDs. Well, if someone has between 11 and 20 DVDs, the midpoint will be 11 plus 20, all divided by 2, which is 15 5. Therefore, the midpoint between 11 to 20 is 15.5, and we're assuming all of these nine people had 15 and a half DVDs. Now, although you can't have half a DVD, we need to make this assumption. If we move on to the next group of people with 21 to 30 DVDs, again we can calculate the midpoint. The midpoint between 21 and 30 is 21 plus 30 all divided by 2. Well, 51 divided by 2 is 25.5. So the midpoint is 
and we can continue this down our group. The midpoint between 31 and 50 is 81 divided by 2, which is 40.5. And the midpoint between 51 and 100 is 100 plus 51, which is 151, divided by 2, which is 75.5. And finally, the midpoint between 101 and 250 is 101 plus 250 divided by 2, which gives us 175.5. So now we have our midpoints and we have our frequencies. What we're going to do next, in order to work out the total number of DVDs in the collection of all of these people, is we're going to multiply our frequencies by our midpoints. Now multiplying the frequency by the midpoint is basically saying these six people each own five DVDs, therefore in total they own 30 DVDs. 30 because 6 times 5 is 30. Next we want the total number of DVDs owned by the people in the 11 to 20 DVD category. So once again we would multiply the 9 people by the 15 and a half DVDs which would give us 139.5 DVDs. And we continue this down the group. 12 times 25.5, 9 times 40, 23 times 75.5, and then 19 times 175. So next we can work out the total number of DVDs in all of these people's collections by adding each of these values together. So by adding 30 to 139.5 to 306 and so on down that group. And then at the bottom of that column, we will get the total number of DVDs in all of those people's collections. And that gives us a grand total of 5,911 DVDs. Now all we need to do to find our mean average is take the total number of DVDs, 5911, and divide it by the total number of people. So up here in the top left, we've got the mean equals 5911 divided by 78 which equals 75.8 to one decimal place. Now to find our modal average, what we need to do is find our most frequently occurring piece of data. Now this is really straightforward when we have these classifications as we've got here because what we can see from our frequencies column is that six people have DVD collections between zero and 10, nine people have DVD collections between 11 and 20. The most frequently occurring piece of data there is the 51 to 100. It doesn't really tell us a great deal, but our modal group here, the most common group, is the 51 to 100's group. So our modal average is the 51 to 100 group. And to find our median average, what we would normally do is line all of our pieces of data up and select the middle value. Well, we have 78 pieces of data. If we divide 78 by 2, we get 39. So what we're going to have is we're going to have 39 bits of data, followed by another 39 bits of data. What that means is we're not going to have a one single piece of data sitting on its own in the middle. The middle of our data is going to be sitting between the 39th piece of data and the 40th piece of data, or 39.5 if you like. So we need to look for where the 39th and 40th pieces of data sit. Well, we have six bits of data plus nine bits of data. Six plus nine is 15, plus 12 bits of data is 27, plus nine bits of data is 36, therefore, our 39th and 40th both sit in this group here. I'll just go through that again. Here we've got six pieces of data. Then we've got another nine pieces of data. That's 15 pieces of data. Then we've got 12 pieces of data. Well, six plus nine plus 12 is 27, plus another nine is 36, meaning our 39th and 40th piece of data sit in this group here. By having our results tabulated like this, they're already in 
ascending order. Our pieces of data are already in ascending order. Therefore, our median group is the same as our modal group, which is the 51 to 100s group. So the only difference with the averages for group data is that when we calculate the arithmetic mean, we need to assume that everyone in a group sits at the midpoint of the data range. We can then calculate the total number of DVDs in the collection for all of the people and then divide it by the total number of people. So the process is very similar to with individual data. And with the mode and the median, we're unable to get an actual modal value, but what we can find is the modal group or the most frequently occurring group. And the same for the median, we can find the median group, which is basically the group where the middle piece of data sits.